Hello everyone, Ray again. Thank you for visiting my channel and please don't forget to subscribe. Today I'm going to go over with you a new idea. It's an idea that was presented by one of the viewers. Yes, one of you guys casually suggested an idea of a vertical turning lathe. And I think it's a great idea. So, it just so happens I had a bunch of stuff in my shop left over from another job that never went anywhere. Which you see right here. I'm going to go over all this in a minute. But first I'd like to say thank you all for supporting my channel. We've hit more than 2,000 subscribers this past week alone. I appreciate it very much. It's nice to know from the comments and all the feedback that I'm getting how much you guys appreciate these videos. So, let's talk about the parts. Right here, I have a slewing bearing. Yes, this is a bearing. You can see right there. It's a slewing bearing, similar to what you might find at the base of a crane or a um, or an excavator where it can pivot around it on its own axis. This is a little smaller than those, but still this is very heavy duty. This one's designed for 125,000 pounds. So this is maybe a little bit more difficult to see. You can see it's a steel a steel plate with a ring gear. So I made this steel plate for this particular job that never went anywhere. But this ring gear is a ring gear out of, a, I think, an old Cadillac. It is a, it's a big ring gear, one of the biggest you can get, as a matter of fact, for, for automobiles. I got it on eBay for very, very little. I think I got it for $15. And I welded it onto this plate. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of welds, about a one inch weld in about eight or 10 places, but that's plenty strong for what I needed. I purchased this gear, brand new, and I, um, I had it, I bored it to fit this gearbox. We'll go over the gearbox in a minute. So this gear, I measured these teeth and it's 14 and a half degree pressure angle. And I bought this gear, and this gear actually cost me more than this ring gear. But you can see, when I put it on here, how nicely it meshes. It's a perfect mesh, right there. So the idea is that this plate and ring gear fit onto this slewing bearing. This gearbox you see right here, it's a one-to-one -one gearbox. So one revolution of this shaft gives you one revolution of this shaft. So for my purposes, that, that's fine. I think this is rated for about three quarters of horsepower, so it'll be fine. The idea was that I had this board and I needed the reach because I had a lot under this table. Now things are different since I'm adapting this for the vertical lathe and I'm going to have to bore this out again to fit onto this side. So this gearbox is going to sit like this with this gear on it and it's going to engage the ring gear. This gets me far enough away where I can have either a motor with a pulley or a hand wheel. It doesn't really matter for this particular case. What's interesting though is the gear reduction. So this is a one-to-one -one gearbox. There is no reduction on this box. However, this is a 24 tooth gear. I've, I've already taken the liberty of counting all these teeth. It's 196 teeth. And the way you determine a gear reduction when you have gears is counting the teeth and dividing them. So 196 divided by 24 gives me an 8.16 ratio. Or you can round that up to 8.2 ratio. So if I have a 1725 motor connected to this gearbox, when I have all this together, means that my plate is going to be moving at about 210 RPM, which is perfect for what I want. So the next phase is to start thinking about the design of this machine. And I think that I've got the perfect base back at the shop. If you're not familiar with my videos, I run a machine shop and I've got a steel base that is going to be perfect for this machine. So. For now, there's one other thing we need to discuss. A little peculiarity about this slewing bearing. These are the bolts that fit in here. They're half 13 bolts. This slewing bearing, though, has very narrow counterbores. So if I try to put a regular screw in there, the head is too big. So I've taken the liberty when I was working on this project years ago, there's a regular screw, and this is a modified screw. You can see I turned the heads down a little bit so it actually goes through that plate. I'm going to go ahead and mount this.
And there we have it. You can see this is going to get bolted very firmly to the base. I'm going to be able to rotate this. There's no play in this bearing. I'm going to have to mount my gearbox, bore out the, the uh, gear so I can mesh it properly. I'll need to put a guard on here to keep these gears from getting grease on them. Mount a motor. So I need to figure out what to make and attach to this plate here in order to be able to hold on to a piece of wood. As you can see, this is not going to be a threaded situation with a threaded spindle. I'm completely open. There's nothing in here. Your standard trucks that you can buy anywhere will not work here unless I make a special plate. But if I've got something this size, I might as well make my own jaws or other fixture by which to attach wood. Don't know what that is yet. If you have any ideas, put it in the comments. I will read them and I am looking for a good idea. Now the last thing is you're thinking, vertical lathe, that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Why, why would anybody do that? It turns out vertical lathes have been around for a long time, probably around the Industrial Revolution. Um, in fact, we have one in the shop. I'm going to put a picture here. You can see that is the vertical lathe we have in the shop. Uh, it's used for doing large, heavy pieces of wood, uh, doing internal boring of big, heavy pieces uh, or awkward pieces or pieces that you cannot otherwise support in a regular lathe without fighting gravity. Remember, in a regular lathe, you have a bed that's in your way. When it's vertical, you can put your turret anywhere you want, you can put your tool anywhere you need it to be. So, that is what we're going to make. We're going to adapt that idea of a vertical lathe for wood turning. It should be interesting. Thank you all for watching. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to my channel. And you see that button right down here in the lower right hand corner? Please go ahead and press that button now, subscribe to my channel, and stay up to date on all my future videos.